So what about going into business with people from the Philippines? Um, this has been brought up tonight, but also the last three weeks people have been messaging me saying, oh, I want to go into business with you. First thing I want to say is, although the call center industry was new to me when I went into setting it up, I come from an electronic background. I come from facilities management and have dealt with help desks. I have come from managing up to a thousand people. So I am not somebody that has not had experience with very hands on with people. I also deal with people culturally. I also deal with language barriers. I mean, when I did um, a survey in Oman, I had guys from Canada, Pakistan, India, um, Omani, Canadian, American, and British. That's seven different nationalities working together, all know their stuff, but all have different cultural backgrounds, abbreviations, standards. As such, I had to standardize it all so they could all work together in a time frame that was just horrendous. Um, I won't go into it too much because it was just a bloody joke. Uh, but the point being is, I come from a background that is very hands-on, very stress-orientated, very push something to the limit to make it happen. That's why I generally don't fail business-wise because I will push it to the limit. Why does this all fit in with what you're asking me? Well, what business are you going on to going into in the Philippines? If it's going to be something local, the the first thing is they could be the best farmers in the world. The problem is the exports. Um, as I discussed before with the um, coconuts, the price of the coconuts was only like four pesos at port price. Now, bear in mind, by the time it gets to the UK, it's about a pound, so it's increased significantly. But it costs about two pesos to produce the coconuts, so there was just no market in it unless it was local. The local market already exists. So look at the fact that although they were coconut farmers 20 years ago, um, why did they stop? Because a lot of it is due to market demand. There's a lot of reasons family businesses have failed. There's been some very successful businesses within my in-laws, um, marble tables and stuff that have been exported before. But China has stepped on the toes. China has destroyed the market by introducing crap and destroying the quality builds because people go, importers are just as bad so I blame you the US, I blame you the UK and everyone else that's importing because you go why should I buy yours at £50 when I can get this one for eight ninety nine? because the one at eight and ninety nine is crap um, but it's a bit like the Walmart and well boutiques you either buy crap or you buy quality. You can't get both. Um, well, you can buy both, but the price you won't get it for the same price. So there's a lot of businesses that cannot function. Um, is there a market for them? Yes. Is there a way through to get through the ports, the exports, the imports and stuff? A lot of time, it just ain't worth the hassle. Um, I've got a friend who did shrimp out to um, Australia. And then the fish, the shrimp went bad at port, so they burnt his entire stock. <laughs> um, I, I shouldn't laugh, really. He lost his entire stock. But the, the it was fresh when it left the Philippines. Um, something went wrong with the refrigeration equipment on the containers. Wiped out. Um, there's a lot of risk here. Like I'm saying, you've got problems with the guys at the ports. You got guys that even if you're a legitimate business, they will rob you blind. Um, the the bullet in the bag scandals are a prime example in the Philippines. It's in your face. They're stealing from you in your face and slap you around a bit, and then expecting you just to bend over it and take it. That is very common in the Philippines. Unless you have a network where these guys want to slap you in the face, but your network's much bigger and much scarier than they are. You have to be very careful. It's nothing to do with being legitimate. 
Legitimacy has nothing to do with it. You can have everything legal. It makes no odds. These guys are like that. You, you've got to be very, very careful. Um, so when somebody says to me, should I get in a business with somebody who's in the Philippines, blah, blah, they say it's a great product. Well, why is it a great product? You're quite well, welcome to send it to me. And I will send it out to 100 Filipinos and they can tell you what it's worth because those Filipinos will tell you if it's a pile of crap. They will tell you that's a fantastic idea and could I sell it for you as well? Or they will turn around and just say that's about you know that's a scam or whatever else. I don't mind helping people. The one thing this channel exists for is stopping people being ripped off. And what about digital businesses? Right. If you haven't done call centers before, don't ask me to do it with you. Um, there is a lot of people in the Philippines with the experience, the knowledge, everything else already doing it. There is also a lot of people in the Philippines that can build the business for me. If I, if I turn around and said to them, I need another call center in Makati, they'll do it. And a lot of time, it doesn't cost me nothing. Why? Because they're looking at the end game. They want to be in there as a manager. They want to be a floor manager. They want to be the IT guy. They want to. They want to run the call center. They come from other businesses, the other call centers, but there they may not be getting what they want. A lot of them are skilled. You know, I'm not being funny. My IT guys work globally. They don't just do the Philippines. Don't assume as some. Filipino that just does this and that. They're, they're doing stuff online. They do a lot of stuff that um, is consultant level. They'll, they'll go into other people's servers in the US and whatever remotely and fix them. The guy at APN um, who does the voice over IP, he left APN and come back as a contractor. Why? Because he knows his stuff. He's on the ball. If APN is struggling, he will do it. Because at the end of the day, you can earn 20,000 pesos a month or you can earn $500 a day. You know, if you're good at your stuff, you do not work for a company direct. I'll tell you that now. Myself, some people ask me why I quit the company I was with because they say, oh, 48,000 pounds a year. That's a big salary. No, it's crap. It is junk. I've been earning over 120,000 a year for the last seven, eight years without a fail. February, I've already got contracts coming in. I'll leave that to one side. Um, but the point is, working for somebody else, you've always got uh, somebody taking as much as they can out of you because they want to push you to see how far you will go for their benefit. They're not pushing your limits of ability. They're pushing your limits of how much you'll put up with. So from that side, be aware there's some fantastic guys out there but will you find them? Not if you're setting up a business from tomorrow. Would you find them in two years' time? Maybe. Would you find them in a network that belongs to me? The answer is no. If you said, Matt, could you find me this guy? The answer is yes. Because these people are not approachable. You won't notice them. You won't find them. The reason I know is because a lot of people trust me. And as such, they trust the stuff I put forward. And it's the same as if I come across a client... I will not put a client to another call center unless I know I trust them. It eliminates any risk for the people I deal with, but more importantly, my trust is the most important thing to me because my whole reputation, business, everything runs on it. So if you're saying, can I just open a call center? I'll tell you, don't bother. I'm not being funny, just don't bother. As I've said in previous videos, the only thing I need is clients. The rest of it I already have. I have it in a stupid amount of abundance and not just in the Philippines. I've got call centers in Guatemala, Australia, um, the US, uh, where else have I got? Hungary, Portugal, Spain. I've got access to a lot of stuff and a lot of people. If you give them the right products, they'll run with it and they all trust me because they've worked with me over a long period of time. So, investing in a business in the Philippines, unless you know it, understand it, don't bother. What about family? F 
Family will not run the business if it's your business. If you're paying up everything and they're just like, oh, I'll just potter her on and turn up, that's what they'll do. They'll just turn up. They don't care if it makes any money or not. It's not their money. They've got no risk. They'll turn up because you told them to and you're paying them. They won't turn up because they see it as a family business or whatever. To get a family business, you've got to have the commitment from them. There's got to be some incentive from them. And this is why I say, you know, a lot of these business ideas that people come up with just can't function because it's just an investment. As such, they couldn't care less. I watched a, um, a guy's got, I think it's about six apartments near me. Um, the gate fell off, right? The gate fell off the block. Um, the water pump didn't work. The electrics were exposed in some of the apartments. The fans had stopped working and all this sort of stuff. Do you know when they fixed it? It had been broke for seven years. The only time they fixed it is when the guy was coming next month. And because he had sent money ahead... What, sorry. His wife had sent money ahead because she knew the family wouldn't have looked after the place. Now, I had a friend of mine staying in one of those apartments. And... Um, I wasn't aware of the problems because I'd set it up and everything was going fine and then I hadn't spoke to him for about a year and a half. But then when I bumped into him, he says, you know, I left some stuff there and they gave my uh, parts, you know, the parts and frying pan and stuff to the animals for drinking water and stuff because he said, could I leave it there while I go back, back to Europe and then get it? They destroyed all his stuff. So, bear in mind, you know, do you know what would have happened if that was um, a family and it's your relatives or whatever? And you said, well, why, why is John not coming back this year? He's, he comes every year. Oh, he said he's going somewhere else now. That's the only bit there is here. Oh, you wouldn't hear the bit, oh, we used all these pots and pans to let the, the cats, dogs, and God knows what eat out of them. And then we... Uh, uh, he gave his duvet and mattress and stuff to as a dog bed and all this sort of stuff. You know, all this stuff that he, he'd actually bought in the Philippines and wanted kept safe while he was away because he rents off us for seven months of the year for the last X amount of years. No, you won't hear any of that. That is the Philippines. People do not tell you the truth. And I know I sound pretty brutal, but this is the way you've got to think. If somebody says to me, he just ain't coming back. First thing I go is, why not? Um, he said he doesn't like it anymore. All right, I'll give him a call. I'll email him. I'll speak to him. Because if you speak to me on email, I have to admit, sometimes I don't respond in a timely manner. But I will eventually go back through my emails and go, oops, I forgot one, and go back through it. But if you're actually doing business with me, I will chase you up. I mean, it's like yesterday, I texted a load of people that some of them I haven't even spoke to in six, eight months. Why? Because it's Christmas. I sent them a Christmas message saying, Happy Christmas, blah, 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 because I just want to see how they're getting on and making sure that we're all still alive. Um, because communication is key and if you're doing business you could have people you can trust and i'll be honest with you with that sort of scenario doing business and the terms it's used in is so loose it's not specific i'd be very very dubious of doing it there's just too much risk a lot of time there's not enough profit the call centers are profitable purely because it's not inside the Philippines. It's an electronic, on the internet business. It's not making money in the Philippines, it's making money on the airwaves and through the telephone lines and on your computer, etc. It is not sat in the country. If you were shifting something that could produce that amount of money in the Philippines that relied on the docks and stuff, you would have a nightmare. Um, I know some people are quite successful in the Philippines, uh, but they all have connections. And they all, they all pay somebody. It doesn't matter what people say, they all pay somebody. Um, when Aquino came into power, he was stopping a lot of the rice imports uh, for Cebu, for example, because there was no tax paid on it. What he meant is they want to cut. 
Was it dealt with? Yeah, they paid one, 180 pesos per second rise for import. There's a bit of information you may not know, but that's the reality of it. So my best advice is, if you're not running it yourself, don't invest in it. Simple as that. And if you're thinking you can go to the Philippines to start up a call center, I wouldn't do that either, unless you understand it. You've got to understand the dialers. You've got to understand where to get data from because 90% of the clients we deal with don't own any data. And if they do send you it, they've sent it to the last 600 call centers as well. So it's worthless. Um, permits and stuff can be a bit dubious as well, a bit of a pain. But ultimately, it becomes a money pit for about two or three months until you get it rolling. Um, and that's relying on the fact that you've got clients, you've got good agents, you've got everything circulating in a way that's going to keep generating cash on a regular basis. Um, my personal view on it is getting much harder to do for telesales, telemarketing, because so many people in it. Um, here in Spain, they telemarket to the UK, and the wages are much higher here. But so are the running costs and taxes and other bits and pieces. Because in the Philippines, there's a bit of leeway in all of this stuff because the wages are so low. Um, so my best advice, if you want to run a current call center and are serious about it, spend some time in one. Understand how the business operates. Understand what you're selling. Develop people you can sell to. You want to be able to go to the Philippines and already have a list of people that will buy from you. If somebody's selling mortgages, if somebody's selling solar panels, if somebody's selling something else in the US, UK, Australia, whatever, you already want to know what they're doing and getting into how they work and then going, I'm going to the Philippines, can I do it for you? And I might say, well, you can, but I don't want any Filipinos doing it. But then you go, okay, well, I will do it, and how about I get another couple of Filipinos just to work alongside me and see how that goes. And they'll probably go, well, it's your car, it's not mine. And as long as you're selling, you're in profit. And if you can get the other guys going as well, and it all starts making money, it can go from two guys to five guys to a hundred guys. Um, but it's not an easy slog. All right, thanks for watching.